as we begin our prayer, let us join in singing together number 674, Healing River of the Spirit, 674. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And your we welcome in the name of the good Lord for all of the blessings that he has given us. First, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You call us to new life by water and the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You call us to give thanks to you for the many gifts you give us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you show us the way, the truth, and the life who is Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we die with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing that he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. We don't hear much about leprosy these days, but back in the day, those who were afflicted with diseases of the skin were cast aside from other members of the community. Before they could be returned to the group, they needed to be healed of the various skin diseases. And it was a Jewish priest who had to admit the person back into the community once the skin had healed. So when we hear about a story of lepers who were cleansed on the way to go and see the Jewish priest for the ritual of approval, this was a powerful re-entry into life for those lepers. It was not simply just the healing of the disease, but it was really a reintegration into the life of the community from which they were banished. Perhaps this rings a bell from the recent pandemic of coronavirus. Now, there are countries that people travel to on a vacation. If, God forbid, you tested positive for the virus while you were on vacation, Before you boarded that airplane to go back home, there would be government buses that would pick you up and would take you away. Imagine if you stayed at a five-star hotel. And then you have to be ushered away by government buses and bus drivers, and you would not be at a five-star lodging during your quarantine until you could heal from the virus. There are some stories of people who had to remain in the government quarantine hotel usually a one- or two-star joint, (laughs) until they healed. And how happy it is to be reintegrated, to say, I'm finally free of COVID. Thank God. So that's a little bit of a glimpse of what it was like. And that's a very minor glimpse because leprosy was far more than just a few weeks. It was, very sadly, a way of separating one from the other, and people would be in a colony away from people for on and on for months, sometimes years, or the rest of a person's life. So on that journey to the priest, the lepers encountered the good Lord, and only one returned to say thank you, the Samaritan, one who was not supposed to. Sometimes we banish ourselves from the Christian community with diseases of the soul, or the mind. We don't need a bus to take us away. Sometimes we do it ourselves. Eucharist from the Greek word means to give thanks, very simply. We do not come to the altar in any Catholic church to receive from God, although we do receive his body and blood. But the principal purpose is to give thanks to the living God for what we have already received, to give thanks and to have blessing to God and to be with one another. Remember that time we were all banished from each other? 
stuck in our homes and unable to come together for church, for mass, to be the family of God. That was a very difficult time in 2020. Praise God, that's over with. And we are here once again. We hope it stays that way. To give thanks. We do not want to be the 10%. But we want to strive to be closer to God in thanksgiving always for those gifts. And sometimes when we lose the Eucharist and we lose the observance of the Sunday gathering, then we lose the spiritual journey and the faith. And there is a, an atrophy over the course of our lives, down and down, that regrettably we see so often. People will say, I'm spiritual. We don't need other people. I don't need God. I pray alone. But that's not a true thanksgiving. Because God placed us on earth to be with one another as a community. Just as he did for two of our parishes here in Schenectady, 100 years, 1922 to 2022. 100 years of blessings. Not meant to be apart but meant to say thank you to God and to each other because the people next to us play a great role and a contribution as to how we have become the body of Christ. We don't live in a vacuum. A vocation is a call from God to serve in our own unique way. And in living that vocation, there are people around us who have helped us along those stages of life from good friends, husbands and wives, Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, your family, the family of God. This here on earth, the way to give thanks at this altar, is a slight glimpse of eternal communion with God and a much larger vision of the family of God. And we thank God principally, not just for coming to 2777 Albany Street, today for this Mass, but to thank the good Lord for the people sitting next to us and everybody he has placed in our lives, including the enemies. That's right, including the enemies, because we have to admit this before God. They help us to be better disciples of Jesus. If everything was perfect and life with no challenges or struggles, then it would be difficult for our faith to be tested. But in the words of Peter, how our faith is tested like fire-tried gold so that we can become the best disciples that we can be, not just to our friends, but even for those who do not love us as we return in love for them. One of the ways that we as the people of God say thanks is through the way of prayer, the way of being close to the Lord and to one another, even in our giving. We give of ourselves when someone asks of us in school, in our homes, in our jobs. Sometimes we think our employers are principals may be a little out of control sometimes. <laughs> that's true. But that's an occasion to pray for employers and principals. No. The principal of the school or our employers or our spouses, they need a prayer too from us. So we give thanks to God for them as well because we are people of Eucharist. From the Greek word, to give thanks. The diocesan appeal is another way which is kicking off at about every parish or nearly every parish in the Diocese of Albany this weekend to give thanks to God. I want you to know how incredibly difficult it is for me to stand here any day to talk about money, <laughs> but I want you to know how incredibly difficult it is for me to preach today in an economic environment which is so difficult these days. You see along with me the prices in the supermarkets. Just the other day, $5.99 for a dozen of eggs. 
And we're not talking at the whole paychecks kind of markets where, where the eggs are routinely $11 a dozen. <laughs> These are ordinary supermarkets, everyone. $5.99 for a dozen of eggs. And I wonder, oh Lord, this is a very difficult period. But did we not say thank you to God during the times when the stock market was going up 20%? Did we not say thanks be to God when gasoline was only $2 a gallon and eggs were only $1.50 a dozen? We said thank you to God and now this is a period that's difficult in our lives. We still thank the good Lord. We still come together as his people. But every day, the ministry of the gospel continues, not just at St. Paul's or Our Lady of Mount Carmel or St. Adalbert, but in the wider family of the Church of Albany, where we try to give thanks to God. My service, as you know, is shared. I always marvel at the people of God here because you have to put up with me, basically a half priest. <laughs> I am full time in the tribunal of Albany with two ministries there and three ministries as pastor of parishes here in Schenectady. And I pray to God, thanks for the people that they put up with me, the half priest, <laughs> to do back and forth. And in the ministry of the tribunal, I serve many separated and divorced persons who are seeking a time for healing as we accompany and journey with them. And like everybody else, we have bills to pay and the energy bills that come due, just like you do in households or at place of business. And how we need help whenever we have to dispose of property, whenever that day comes. Or think of Our Lady of Mount Carmel with the convent down the street. I think of all the rules and regulations for human resources. I can't keep of those straight myself. <laughs> human resources, HR regulations. Just a few ways of saying that there are many people involved with helping us and keeping us on a path, not just closer to God, but closer to one another in the right way. And if you receive this in the mail, like I did back at the end of September, it's not junk mail, but it's a way of kicking off our annual campaign, which runs through June 30th. I just ask you to give it some prayer and thought, and I'm well aware of the challenges of these days with paying electrical bills and getting a dozen of eggs and inflation the way it is. You do whatever you can and give it over to God. God knows if we give thanks because we cannot fool God at the end of the day. Whatever can be done can be done and the rest is in God's hands. But like the leper from Samaria, we always want to return and be thankful for what we've been given, never putting aside the memory of how we've been blessed by our friends, by even the enemies, that we continue to announce the good news in our own special way, because you and I are loved by God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. Let us continue in thanksgiving to pray to God for one another. For the church, for the church, that we are grateful to the Lord for our many gifts, like the leper from Samaria, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a sacrificial heart, that as we kick off our diocesan appeal, we may serve and support the needs of the Christian people and the church of Albany, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from physical or mental illness, that they may know our Lord's healing presence in their lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of Hurricane Ian, that we may truly support them with our prayers and goods as they turn to us for support in rebuilding their lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the consecrated life and the priesthood in the Diocese of Albany, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of these souls for whom this Mass is applied. Michael Calora, Doreen Comenzo and Louis Comenzo, Dorothy Evans, Edward, Doris, and Michael Kubik, John, Marianne, Mark, and Andy Cook, Genevieve and Mac Steck, Dorothy Evans, Alex DeMarco, Barbara Coughlin, Abraham and Ida Sadler, Bernadine DeMonte, Michael and Philomena Davy, Otto and Jenny DeMania, James Qualentone, Beatrice Rossi, John Simon and Pauline Karovic, deceased Creasy family members, Carmelina Caldwell, John Michalese, Aaron Rickmeyer, Marion Galka, Elsie Stenard, Leanne Stenard, James Addison, and all who have died, that they may rest in the peace of the living God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our prayer intentions that we hold in silence in our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all of these prayers through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's second collection is for the building and ground maintenance. We thank you for your generosity. As we present our gifts, please join in singing, Be Still My Soul, number 675. 675. Has 
Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. All now mysterious shall be By the mystery of this water and wine, we have become the share of the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness. We have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might be the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim... Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward Scharfenberger, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
east and sea, number 332. 332. Together. 
us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, next week I won't see you. I have a wedding to assist at of my former altar server at St. John the Baptist Parish in Walton, where I humbly served this pastor for three years. That's 100 miles southwest of Schenectady. Well, those were wonderful years. I was there for three years, and I have been asked to be the assistant. So uh, a joy, but I will miss you for next week as well. But today's a very special day, everyone. We're going to have a unique ceremony in a few moments out at that sign. 100 years of St. Paul the Apostle Parish. Today is the culminating event, the burial and blessing of the time capsule right outside at that sign following the Mass. After we unvest in the sacristy, we'll be out there and That'll be a way to give thanks to God, to be people of the Eucharist for the gift of the parish and the benefactors of our parish, living and deceased to make this day possible. Thanks be to God. If you're going that way for a brief moment, we have Polish platter tickets for St. Adalbert for next week as well. And don't forget to stop there or there for the bulletins either way. We'll take good care. I'll see you outside at the sign or elsewhere until we meet again. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and denounce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Our recessional song is number 612, Give Thanks to the Lord, 612. Give thanks, Give thanks to, to the Lord, Lord who does wondrous deeds, who masters the winds, Whose love is forever, whose love is forever, whose love is forever more. Give thanks to the God who has blessed our land, who guards every step with a mighty hand. Whose love is forever, whose love is forever, whose love is forever Love is forever, whose love is forever, whose love is forever.